Hello there. Welcome to Just the Disc. My name is Brian, and we talk about Blu-rays here. I've got the new disc box. It means it's time for a collection update. Let's get into this. Start with uh, Explorers, Joe Dante's film from uh, 1985. Uh, this is the new Shout Select edition, a very nice collector's edition, I'll say right at the top. Uh, hats off to Shout Select, by the way, for having done nice work on Joe Dante's filmography so far. They've given us a nice collector's edition of The Burbs, a nice collector's edition of Matinee. Um, there might be even another Joe Dante movie in there that I'm blanking on, uh, but this is now another great collector's edition. So this film, starring Ethan Hawke, River Phoenix, and, um, oh shoot, I can't remember, Jason Presson maybe? The third kid's name. Um, notoriously a film, Joe Dante was disappointed in only in part because he was rushed on the production of the film, and so the film wasn't really completed, uh, that is to say, they were rushed so much and they weren't allowed the time they needed to sort of find the movie in the edit. And so Joe always felt like, from what I understand, that this was never a fully finished movie. Now, this Blu-ray goes a little ways in trying to collect, sort of correct that. Um, okay, so this is our slipcase and then... This is the flipped artwork on the inside. Now, this has two versions. You have your theatrical cut of the film, and you have your uh, home video cut on disc one, I believe. Um, yeah, it says includes home video and theatrical cuts of the film. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't watch the home video cut yet, so I don't know the full differences. I watched the theatrical. Um, but that doesn't necessarily, neither will give you a full sense of what the movie should have been. But what will help is this really neat documentary. Uh, it's called uh, A Science Fiction Fairy Tale, The Story of Explorers. And that includes new interviews with Joe Dante, screenwriter Eric Luke, and star Ethan Hawke, and some other folks that worked on the production. It's about an hour long, and it's very enjoyable. You know, Joe goes into detail about, you know, like I said, the truncated production schedule and the problems he had with the film and some really just neat stories about the actors, you know, things about um, uh, Bob Picardo acting in alien makeup, about Rob Bottin working on the effects and things like that. Um, and it's really neat to hear Ethan Hawke reflect on the film because it was, if not his first, I want to say it was maybe his first. Uh, but definitely an early experience for him and one that uh, affected him, you know, in terms of the movie not doing well and how that, you know, maybe affected his career or not. I mean, he obviously has gone a long way and proved himself to be a really great and insightful actor and, and an insightful interview. I always feel like I get some little nugget out of every interview I see with Ethan Hawke. He'll say something philosophical or interesting or whatever and it just kind of sticks so it's really neat to see him uh, talking about this film and his memories of it uh, so I really dug that and then we have uh, deleted scenes that Joe Dante I think found maybe like I can't remember I don't want to say in his garage but it could have been uh, they're, they're transferred from videotape so they don't look amazing but it's, I want to say there's like, ah, shoot, I can't remember how many, but there's a bunch. And uh, so you can watch them with and without commentary from Joe. And there's definitely one scene in particular that he really misses in the film. And when you watch that scene, you go, yeah, I really wish this had been in there. Um, and so, yeah, no, it's, it's really solid. Then you have uh, new interviews with the cinematographer, John Hora and editor Tina Hirsch both um, have some interesting interesting things to say. The John Hoare interview appears to have been done during the filming of that guy, Dick Miller. So Dick Miller like jumps into John Hoare's interview. It's a short interview. I want to say it's like six minutes or something. Um, but, but yeah, no, I really enjoyed 
the full package of the disc and that this movie is available on Blu-ray. Uh, one of the people that's in the documentary is Ernest Klein, writer of uh, Ready Player One and now Ready Player Two, and apparently a guy who is like one of the number one fans for Explorers, which totally makes sense when you think about it. It's, you know, very much a movie that feels like, you know, the Steven Spielberg uh, 80s kind of vibe. And Joe makes a point about, like, how it opens Spielberg but then goes to Dante or something, which he said he cops to. Uh, Because it does get weird and silly and... Um, pop cultural referential in terms of the aliens and how they're just basically kids and I won't go too far into it but um, the story is really just about some kids who figure out a way to build a spaceship and a sort of a, uh, a bubble that will lift things and move them so basically they can make the spaceship fly through this thing this crazy invention it's a little outlandish but I think for the 80s it's kind of just the perfect dream machine kind of movie, you know? So anyway, uh, I know this is a big one for a lot of people, and so I had to get it, and I'm glad I did. Love to see more Joe Dante on Blu-ray, and this is well worth picking up. Then we have Drive from 1997. This is from MVD Rewind Collection. I didn't swap the artwork. I actually just like that artwork best. Um, so this is directed by Steve Wang, who did The Giver 2, and, oh man, he's done a few others that I'm blanking on right now. This is a movie I'd long heard about as, like, the sort of unheralded action gem of the late 90s. As you can see, it stars Mark Dacascos and Kadeem Hardison, as well as Brittany, Brittany Murphy shows up for a little bit in a kind of an odd role, but ultimately interesting. Um, but it's basically, uh, well, it says Toby Wong, Mark Dacascos, um, who was in John Wick 3, I forgot about that, is on a martial arts mission impossible. With a bioenergy module placed on his chest, Toby's awesome martial arts skills are tuned to a superhuman level. The only problem is that Toby doesn't want the power. Now only an army can stop him, and that's just what's hunting him down. As he makes his escape from an ammo-packing posse of hitmen, Toby needs a hostage, Malik uh, Kadeem Hardison, to drive him to freedom in Los Angeles. It's double power, Jackie Chan-like super moves as the two unlikely heroes face off with a new advanced killer in this cult classic high-octane hyper-action movie featuring an all-star supporting cast that includes Brittany Murphy, Sana Lothan, and Tracy Walter. I always forgot Tracy Walters in Batman. It's his biggest movie, but I'm, I can't help but think Play to Shrimp from Repo Man. And Anyway, he's fun in this. He watches like a weird TV show called like, um, it's like a Frog Einstein TV show. It's got Bob Burns in it. And they cut to it a few times, people watching this weird frog TV show. <laughs> I thought that was a funny running gag. But the star of the movie is obviously Mark Dacascos and his abilities as a martial artist and his agility, which is top notch. I mean, it is Jackie Chan level stunt work and action choreography. Um, obviously you could draw a parallel to something like rush hour, uh, you know, a few, a few years later than this film. Uh, but Kadeem Hardison's very funny and he has some like heartfelt moments. He just brings a, I don't know, pathos or something to the film that is kind of neat. I would say the only problem I have is it's a little long. It's just eight minutes shy of two hours. And even with a lot of that running time taken up with fight scenes, it still feels a little bit long to me. But that said, there are some incredible uh, fights in this. Just remarkable stuff with... Uh, I don't, you know, I don't want to really spoil it. You really just need to see it because there's just interesting use of weapons. There's weapons being turned against their owners. There's... Uh, boots being used as gloves. There's like um, electronic, like lightsaber. Not, I mean, I don't know. There's shocking stun <laughs> staffs or something. Um, it's it's just a blast, you know. So there's gunplay in it, but there's also tons of martial arts 
and DeCascos is just on fire. He's just incredible. Like he really is living up to a Jackie Chan type model in this and it's fun. So I got to recommend that people check this one out. Um, it, uh, let's see here. The high, it has a high definition presentation of the extended director's cut. That's probably why it's so long. Um, in two, three, five, one aspect ratio from a brand new 4k scan of the original camera negative. So it looks good. Uh, audio 2.0 stereo 5.1 audio commentary by director Steve Wang with fight choreographer, uh, Kochi Sakamoto, oh, Koichi Sakamoto, and stars Mark DeCascos and Kadeem Hardison. Uh, Drive the Force Behind the Storm, a documentary that's about 48 minutes that includes the cast and director. They talk to most everybody that you would think involved with the production. Um, interview gallery with cast, director, and crew, including Mark DeCascos, Kadeem Hardison, director Steve Wang, second unit director Wyatt Weed, and stunt coordinator Koichi Sakamoto. 25 minutes drive theatrical cut uh that's an hour and 40 minutes now I, I need to check that out and just kind of see how it feels in terms of the pace um but obviously you would probably lose a few bits in the fight scenes and that would be tricky so i don't know um but definitely a movie that sort of lived up to what i'd heard about it and one that i like i said i definitely recommend this is an all region disc and Comes with a poster inside that is the uh, artwork um, and the reversible artwork looks like that um, but I'm a, I'm a fan generally of the rewind collection discs and um, I have quite a few of them and I like what they're doing they're they kind of fly under the radar a little bit I feel like people don't talk about them enough for what you're getting. Uh, like, just tons of extras. They all have a really nice selection of extra features um, that have been pr produced for these discs. I mean, look at all that. Um, so just, if you haven't, look into MVD Rewind and just check out what they're offering. You know, they're, they're usually offering a good amount for what you get, you know, the amount you're paying. So, MVD. Then I got a bunch... I think all the rest of these are 4Ks, actually. One, two, three, four. Like five 4Ks. Okay. First up, we have Last Action Hero. This is a steelbook. I know there's a regular version. Um, I don't know. The, the steelbook went off of Amazon. I pre-ordered it a long time ago, and it went off of Amazon for whatever reason. Um, so inside you have a Blu-ray and the... Uh, the 4K, and the 4K looks great. I was really impressed with how it looked, and I had just kind of forgotten how much I love this movie. Um, the script is by Shane Black, and a uh, story by Zach Penn and Adam Left. Uh, Shane Black and David Arno. Are not. Um, but it definitely feels like a Shane Black movie, one of the most self-aware meta movies maybe ever, um, where you have a kid played by Austin O'Brien, who lives in a sort of dilapidated New York City. The one bright spot is that uh, he goes to a movie theater and the guy, the old guy that runs it, lets him see movies early. In this case, he's seeing, I want to say, the fourth or fifth movie in the Jack Slater series. Jack Slater is played by Schwarzenegger and there is a golden ticket that comes into play and the kid is basically transported into the film. And then Jack Slater is later transported out of the film into the quote unquote real world of New York City. And that is a really intriguing back and forth meta thing with the kid being extra aware that he's in a movie when he's in it and having to explain what it means to not be in a movie to Jack Slater when he's then in New York and seeing himself reflected as the Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie. Um, but yeah, it's just so funny. It's so funny. And I just can't get over how bummed I am that it just didn't do well at the time and that people didn't, I guess, enjoy it or didn't get it. I don't want to say that. I just don't, maybe it just wasn't a thing they, they were into, but, um, it's directed by, uh, of course, John McTiernan who did Die Hard among other things. And it's, 
a really fun action movie. Like it's just way over the top and there's just so much incredible stunt work and comedy in the stunt work and great lines from Schwarzenegger. And I just love that he was willing at the time to make fun of himself in this way. And it just, it's a gem. Like I really love this movie. Um, this disc includes a commentary with director John McTiernan, deleted and alternate scenes, alternate ending, the big gun music video by ACDC, an original behind the scenes uh, featurette. I should say, um, personal note, Last Action Hero soundtrack, I believe was the first compact disc I ever bought as a teenager. I was really into all the artists on the soundtrack. I was into Megadeth and their song Angry Again and Extreme and whoever else they got on the soundtrack. It was sort of a heavy metal, heavy rock soundtrack of the time. And a lot of people recording new songs and uh, it was fun. It was a big soundtrack for me, a soundtrack I liked very much. Um, You know, at the time, probably more than I even liked the movie, but I've definitely come around now. Highly recommended. If you can't get the Steelbook, get the other 4K. It looks great. It's one of the best looking ones I've seen uh, from Sony and well worth getting. All right, next one is an import. Uh, A friend of the show told me about this French import of Three Days of the Condor, as you can see there. This, of course, um, is region locked. However, the 4K is not. I know that people have heard tell of some region lock 4Ks. This is not one of them. This plays fine in my US 4K player. I'll pull off the... um... So this is what it looks like. I had to get this one from Amazon France, I believe. I don't think Amazon UK had it. Um, I could be wrong, but there may be other ways, other places that have it. So do some digging and and check it out. But it looks great, I was going to say. Uh, the, the one thing I will say, just warning folks, you know, it's Paramount, and Paramount has been digging into their catalog titles and bringing out 4Ks, and so there's a chance. I haven't heard anything. I don't have any intel at all that it's coming, but it is a pretty decent size release. I mean, obviously it stars uh, Robert Redford and Faye Dunaway and Max von Sydow and it's directed by Sidney Pollack. It's just a bigger release from the 70s for them and I feel like it wouldn't be totally out of the realm of possibility that they would release it domestically Um, because this wasn't cheap, I'll be honest. It was, you know, probably more than I should have spent but I'm a big fan of this movie Um, and and again, it looks very good so I'm glad I got it. Uh, It has a documentary, uh, The Paranoid Cinema of the 70s, I think, and there's a commentary from Sidney Pollack. I think both of those might be ported from a DVD. Um, the commentary definitely is, if I recall. Um, but so you don't need to hold on to your Blu-ray because I think that's all the features that were included on the domestic Blu-ray. Um, in fact, the documentary may not even have been included. It may have just been the commentary, but don't quote me on that. Anyway, glad I got this. Looks good. Worth tracking down if you're a fan. Next we have, I know a lot of people have talked about this one already, but why not? Uh, Django, Sergio Corbucci's film Django, starring a 23-year-old Franco Nero. I learned that from the commentary track. I can't believe he was only 23 when he made this movie. Uh, Apparently they uh, added some, you know, had him grow out his stubble and did a few things to make him look older, and it works. But when you look at him, I'm just like, wow, that's crazy. Um, Great Sergio Corbucci western Um, sort of playing on the Yojimbo slash Fistful of Dollars model. Um, Guy comes into town with warring gang factions, pits them against each other, etc., etc. But this is a Blu-ray that was, you know, in and out of, you know, it was originally produced by Arrow. I had tried to pre-order it. Actually, you know, I didn't. And then I realized it had gone you know they like they had some issue with the rights i think blue underground owned some rights and they worked it out ultimately but they had put out a blu-ray which was then recalled and then people that had the blu-ray sort of coveted it it was like this big grail to have it 
but I'm glad I waited because this 4K looks incredible. Um, it, uh, it just, I, you just from frame one, you see the red credits that just pop. Uh, in the early opening scenes, there's some some gentlemen with red scarves, also just pop. Uh, the detail is incredible. I mean, I've talked about Arrow in their 4Ks on the channel before, and this is yet another great example of the fine work that Arrow is doing. I know these are expensive, and that is a difficult thing if you're on a limited budget, but know that if you're looking for high-quality 4K um, presentations and extras, Arrow is top of the heap. They are just doing such great work. Um, so this one has, I got the limited, so it has um, the 4K and then a Blu-ray of Texas Adios, also with Franco Nero. I thought that might be a 4K, but it is not. Uh, that is just a Blu-ray. That's still nice to have. Uh, and then you've got some uh, lobby cards, like a bunch of them here, that come with this really nice uh, packaging. Uh, and then it has uh, some nice features on it too. Um, so it has, as you can see there, uh, UHD Blu-ray presentation of Django, HDR 10 compatible, uh, high definition presentation of Texas Adios, uncompressed mono 1.0 PCM, original English and Italian soundtracks, English subtitles and Italian for the Italian soundtracks, optional English subtitles for the deaf and hearing impaired, 60 page, uh, perfect bound book, uh, writing by Howard Hughes and Robert, uh, Roberto Curti and the original reviews. Now I'll show that just for a second so you can see it. There's a great poster. That's a really nice, um, stock that they used for the poster that comes with it too. But here's the book. I mean, it's definitely not a booklet. This is a nice, almost like a BFI, you know, book type. And uh, essay and pictures and just beautiful. Really nice. Um, okay, so what other features does it have? I'm not sure how many of these features are brand new, but nonetheless... You have on disc one audio commentary by film critic and historian uh, and theorist Stephen Prince, which was great. Like I really, really dug his track. I, I'm sure I've heard him before, but I don't remember the last time. But he's just a guy who sort of gets your attention right away and has lots of great observations about the film. Really good track. Uh, Drango Never Dies, an interview with star Franco Nero. Cannibal of the Wild West, an interview with assistant director Ruggiero Diodato. Uh, Sergio, my husband, an interview with Sergio Corbucci's wife, Nori Corbucci. Uh, That's My Life, Part 1, archival interview with co-writer Franco Rossetti, a rock and roll scriptwriter, an archival interview with co-writer Piero uh, Vivalar, Vivarelli, a punch in the face, an archival interview with stuntman and actor Gilberto uh, Galimberti, Discovering Django, an appreciation by Spaghetti Western scholar Austin Fisher. An introduction to Django by Alex Cox. Always love his uh, insights on Spaghetti Westerns. Clearly a huge genre for him. He's done commentaries on a bunch of Kino releases. And just a big fan. Obviously made Straight to Hell. You know, very much a uh, Spaghetti Western inspired film. Um, so he's a huge fan and I always love his thoughts. Um, an archival featurette with the acclaimed director. Uh, and then on Texas Audios, an audio commentary by uh, C. Courtney Joyner and Henry C. Uh, Park. The Sheriff is in town, an interview with star Franco Nero. Jump into the West, an interview with co-star Alberto, uh, Alberto Deli Aki. Yeah, I can't. I'm sorry. Uh, That's My Life Part 2, an archival interview with co-writer Franco Rossetti. Hello, Texas. And appreciation by Spaghetti Western scholar Austin Fisher. Um, so like I said, look how long it just took me to read all those features. Um, that's just a ton of great stuff. So this is an incredible 4K release. Another home run 4K from Arrow. Next we have a new 4K from one of the Vinegar Syndrome partner labels. Uh, I want to say it is Gunpowder and Sky. 
Uh, if you go and check out the podcast feed for Just the Discs, I did an interview with Justin LaLiberty uh, just prior to the uh, Vinegar Syndrome sale. And he talked about this movie specifically. And I hadn't even heard of it, to be honest. I'm sure a lot of you had. Uh, obviously, it has Pedro Pascal in it. Uh, so for Mandalorian fans, uh, I'm sure you've probably already seen this. But uh, I hadn't. And it's a really neat, lo-fi science fiction western, if you will, um, about a father and daughter played by Sophie Thatcher and Jay Duplass who are sort of at the end of the line of a, a weird space transport service that basically is like a big ship that holds all these pods and they do a drop onto this planet which they have just a certain amount of time to get back to the ship so they can then catch the ship back to Earth or wherever. Um, but there's these crystals that they can get through these organic, weird, not jellyfish, but these things in the ground on the planet. Um, but it's really, like I said, I want to say it was about a $4 million movie, but it looks much more expensive. And all the tech is, you know, designed by the filmmakers and it just really works. But again, it plays like a Western. It plays like a, not a Sierra Madre thing, but kind of a Western where there's a certain desperation to trying to find these crystals. And I don't want to say how Pedro Pascal gets involved. Um, but, um, but we enjoyed this. It's, it's a really unique vision of a film and the 4k looks excellent. And you can get this through the vinegar, vinegar syndrome site. And I highly recommend it. Um, it, um, comes with a really cool booklet that's kind of got a bunch of um, sort of uh, s descriptions of gear of the period, kind of, of the film, I mean. Um, so it's kind of like, almost like a magazine, like, sort of, I don't know, it's pretty cool. Um, so then you have your Blu-ray and your 4K. And then a lot of features here. Um, so you have brand new 2021 ma uh, filmmaker introduction, commentary track with the filmmakers, the Prospect short film from 2014, behind the scenes featurette, uh, deleted scene, actually a couple deleted scenes, uh, inside Prospect helmets, helmets of Prospect. Uh, so they have a bunch of little featurettes. The drop pod, scene analysis, uh, cost with a costume supervisor designer, um, scene analysis with the visual effects supervisor, scene analysis with visual effects. Super, they have different, like there's the dust effects and the spaceship VFX. And so you've got a bunch of little featurettes kind of talking about how they designed the film and what they did and great package overall. Uh, it says, this is what the standalone Star Wars movie should feel like. That's actually not a bad way to put it. It's, uh, it does, it feels like a little more, I don't want to say traditional, but like not a, of a Star Wars universe of some kind of evolved universe that we live in like not a galaxy far far away but a futuristic time that comes from our present earth but it's filled with all kinds of interesting space dialect that i love that isn't always explained so you have to sort of just figure it out through the context in the film uh but i totally dug it it's just a really neat movie definitely worth uh snagging especially on the 4k okay and last but not least i don't have much to show you here but I was sent this uh, Babadook uh, 4K from Second Sight. Um, and so with that comes this paper, which shows basically what you would be getting and you would you want to get because this is just a really great disc. Like, I have my, um, my old Screen Factory disc, but this outdoes it. Obviously, it's 4K, so there's that, but in terms of the extras, which I'll get into in a second. But So you can see uh, it's a really nice second sight uh, package. They do... I want to say their boxes are kind of like this along these lines. Um, and uh, it's just beautiful. You can see all the package that comes with it. You get a book with the limited edition, which I don't have to show, unfortunately, but... Um, 
in terms of the actual features so you've got the 4k uh, and a blu-ray dual format 4k mastered uh, by the original post-production facility and presented in HDR and it looks fantastic I really was I mean I have the Dawn of the Dead Second Sight is doing great work I just need people to know that if you're buying Second Sight Blu-rays or 4Ks, it's quality stuff. They're really worth your time. Uh, a lot of their Blu-rays are region locked, so you'll have to have a multi-region player. Not their 4Ks, though. This played fine in my U.S. player. But anyway, going on with the um, stuff here. Audio commentary by Alexandra Heller-Nicholas and Josh Nelson. Uh, I love them. I've talked about them in previous videos. Um, this is my house, an interview with uh, S.E. Davis. The sister interview with Haley McKinney, uh, Conjuring Nightmares, an interview with Christian Moliere, Shaping Darkness, an interview with Simon Najou, uh, If It's In a Name or In a Look, interview with Alex Holmes, The Bookmaker, an interview with uh, Alexander Juhaz, Baba Duke, an interview with Jed uh, Krizel, and uh, the short film that the director made before she got this gig and it's a great short film that is on the Screen Factory Blu-ray and I want to say some deleted scenes are on the Screen Factory Blu-ray but just about everything else here isn't um, they call him Mr. Babadook the making of uh, there's no place like home creating the house special effects stabbing scene the stunts illustrating evil uh, and creating the book uh, the limited edition contents rigid slipcase with new artwork by Peter Diamond, uh, 150 page hardback book with new essays by Daniel Bird, Anna Bogatskaya, Kat Ellinger, all right, Rich Johnson, John Tolson, and Laura Venning, archive interview with Jennifer Kent, the director, production stills, and original artwork concepts, and slick, six collector's art cards. That is what you see on the front there. That is what you would be getting if you ordered this. And again, I do recommend it. Um, I don't have it, but I may have to get it. Um, just having the disc may not be enough because that looks like an incredible uh, package from Second Sight. So um, that will do it for this collection update. Uh, hopefully there's some stuff in here that uh, is of interest to you folks. Let me know what you've picked up recently and what you've enjoyed and what you recommend. Uh, and thank you for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.